Hi, everyone. I'm Bar, and I am with the Responsible AI Institute. Um, and I want to talk to you today about why the US economy has been outcompeting the rest of the world for 250 years. Um, one reason that um, Abraham Lincoln pointed to is the US patent system. Uh, and the patent system allowed people like uh, Thomas Edison, a uh, person of modest means who grew up uh, selling candy on trains, uh, to patent and profit from his inventions like the electric light bulb. But the US government also used competition law, like uh, the Sherman Antitrust Act, uh, to take on monopolies. So it struck a balance between patent law and competition law. Let's also acknowledge who this growth story was not intended to benefit. Uh, so these are groups like Native Americans and women. Uh, and as the East Coast cities were booming, banks were using redlining to deny mortgages to uh, people in black neighborhoods. Today, we see that economic power has moved west. Uh, so California leads the country in patents filed per capita. And an increasing percentage of these patents are related to AI. AI has achieved a lot of very impressive things in the last few years. Um, and I, I'm particularly impressed by AlphaFold's progress on uh, the protein folding problem, uh, which is almost certain to give a big boost to drug discovery and the fight against diabetes and cancer and other such diseases. But there's also a growing recognition, as other speakers have mentioned, of AI's pitfalls, uh, because it's fast, it can scale in a uniform way, it can be unpredictable, and even when it works well, it can concentrate power in the organizations that use it. The international community has made great progress in developing responsible AI principles. Um, the EU has proposed an AI Act, which would regulate AI systems by the risk levels that they create. And so far, uh, while the US has led the way in AI advancements, uh, there are increasingly other players in the game, too. Uh, so countries around the world are competing for investment and talent and working to create uh, the right mix of incentives. So I noted in a recent article that the U.S. approach to governing AI has been implicitly risk-based, uh, but increasingly the risk-based based approach is becoming more explicitly laid out in uh, policies, guidance, and uh, in frameworks. Uh, the White House is developing an AI Bill of Rights, um, and the administration believes that without protections, uh, AI lending systems could become just a more effective version of the redlining that we saw in cities like Philadelphia 80 years ago. And we're also seeing federal agencies starting to adopt new enforcement tools for unlawful AI systems. Uh, so, for example, regulators required a company that trained facial recognition models on uh, images collected without consent. They required that they delete the models. Um, we've also seen action at the state and local levels. So, uh, starting next year, any automated hiring system used in New York City, for example, will have to undergo bias audits, um, and candidates will have to uh, be informed of their right to opt for a different method of evaluation. So my organization, the Responsible AI Institute, tracks these developments around the world. And our leader, Ashley Casavan, developed Canada's Directive on Automated Decision Making, which is the first major government directive on AI. Our effort now is to develop a Responsible AI certification program for systems um, and we have, uh, we have our program now under review by national accreditors, and we're, we're inspired by the success of other certification programs like uh, fair trade certification or lead certification for buildings. 
the requirements of our implementation framework uh, in areas like fairness, explainability, and others uh, look different in different contexts. Um, so for example, automated skin disease, how, how principles like fairness and explainability translate there is different from uh, automated lending. Um, and we work closely with our community in developing our certification program. Um, our, the, we have a great governing board behind us. Our chair, Manoj Saxena, formerly managed IBM Watson, for example. So I started this talk by mentioning the importance of striking a balance between patent law and competition law. Um, I'll just note that today we also have to find the right balance between uh, general responsible AI requirements and the implications of using AI in specific contexts. And one such context is invention itself. Um, so last year, a court in Virginia considered whether AI can be listed as an inventor on a patent application. Um, the answer was no, but the court said, this may change in the future. So we have to have um, thoughtful conversations about AI's impact on our institutions, our processes, and our politics. Uh, so I'm grateful to uh, communities like AI Los Angeles for bringing us together uh, to have these conversations um, and to all of you for listening. Thanks so much.